Will the politics of gun control be forever transformed? That's next on Hotline TV. We see parents who dream big of honor students and artists. By supporting programs that help children learn, we help parents watch their dreams come true. From the Watergate Building in Washington, this is Hotline TV. Now, here's Hotline Editor, John Mercurio. Well, it's Tuesday, everyone. I'm John Mercurio. And I'm Amy Walter. It's been a long time since there was a real national conversation about gun control, but in the aftermath of the tragic shootings at Virginia Tech, and with John McCain reaffirming his support for gun rights, what kind of discussion, Amy Walter, do you think we're going to be seeing leading up to 2008? Is this a, is this a tragic event at Virginia Tech uh, enough of a formative event to really change the debate or create a debate in the 2008 campaign? Well, I think we're going to have to wait and see as this unfolds what the real story ends up being about. Who this guy was, where did he get the guns? You know, right. we're starting to hear things about the serial numbers that were shaved off. So, mm -hmm. how how did somebody actually acquire this? I think the the difference, and and I've been you know reading today about Columbine and its impact on 2000. Obviously, everybody looks to Al Gore, his support for gun control as being an issue in some of the rural areas and mm -hmm. southern states mm -hmm. uh, for costing him votes there. And at the same time, this is just a very different political environment than it right. was in 2000, where these sorts of things could drive an election. I think, uh, obviously, the issues that are driving 2008 are already baked into the cake. This is a rock, and it's driven right. by that. Now, these issues here, again, I, I think we've had so many tragedies since Columbine um, that I don't know if there's a new focus on gun control or whether we go back to uh, other issues about how is it that we have kids mm -hmm. or young people in this place that are, you know, what, what are the psychological and other issues right. that lead to this? You know, I've been struck over the past 24 hours by the relative silence on the, on be, on the, on the side of the Democratic, uh, the sort of the old Democratic Party, which was so strongly uh, right. in support of gun control. You've seen people like Carolyn McCarthy, who of course lost her husband uh, in, on the, in the Long Island uh, shootings in 1993 and is now in Congress. She's come out, she's talked about it, but you haven't seen a lot of other people people like Chuck Schumer uh, uh, making big comments. And I think to some extent, uh, there's a political element there. Chuck Schumer was the chairman of the DSCC in 2006 that recruited people like Jim Webb, that recruited people like John Tester, sort of the new Democratic Party uh, that they're looking to to hold on to their, their political power in 2008. And I think to some extent, that's why you're actually seeing relatively little uh, on the blogosphere I, from the left. Yeah, from the and left I also think it's, control. and that may be true, but I, I do also think that there is a line here not to cross, which is to, to pounce on a tragedy like this and instantly turn it into sure. a political story and instantly say, see, this is why we need to have better gun control or this is why we need to make sure that, now, you know, again, we're not, we're doing, not that doing that here, right now. Right now, exactly. exactly. But I, I think that there is something to be said about holding off, making this um, an instant political potato, hot sure. potato, rather than allowing this the scene to unfold and, and, and to focus really on the, the uh, emotional components of the campus and allow the campus to be the center of attention and the students, not the sure. politics. Oh, I absolutely agree with you. I also think to some extent, I think that there's, uh, there, there's, there's very little to be gained, uh, looking at That's it right. in, in, in sort of a crass political way, uh, more so. There's very little to be gained uh, on either side in trying to sort of uh, you know, enter into or start a debate right now about that. I think to a large extent, too, I think Democrats or, or even Republicans who supported gun control Following stories like, or following incidents like, like, like Columbine, uh, saw very little uh, impact. Saw very little sort of, very few results come out. Uh, very, very few legislative uh, results come out of, of their efforts. Uh, so I think to some extent that side of the Democratic Party or that side of the, that, that issue uh, is is not too optimistic about being able to change the debate. Right, and I think it goes back to other issues, and again, this is where Democrats like to talk about too, which is safety, school safety, putting kids in situations where you don't have to worry about them every single day. And the bottom line is, and I think this is where the story has been focused today, is how on earth does a shooting start at 7.15 on one part of campus, right. and two hours later nobody knows about it, That's and exactly it ends right. up in another part of the campus. And I think that is really, for so many schools, the, the aftermath of Columbine and September 11th was, What's our plan? Mm -hmm. What do we do? How do we take care of these kids? And that getting caught up in the debate about should people have guns and mm -hmm. how do they 
you know, how do you get large magazine capacity guns? Right, when there's actually Misses a the larger bigger, There's conversation. a bigger conversation. And actually, to his credit, you saw uh, New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson uh, issue a statement yesterday and talk about that exact issue, talk about school safety, talk right. about how he was issuing this directive uh, to the head of the University of uh, the New Mexico's university system uh, to talk about issues like that. Yeah. Well, that is a very, very sad discussion, but uh, we are sadly out of time for today. Thank you for joining us on Hotline TV.